You know, football has a lot of stories. Some are sad, some are weird, and some are just uplifting. One moment is plagued with toxic negativity, and in another moment, it can be used as a platform for good. Too often, if it's not the transfer news, it's normally the former that dominates the headline. That being said, every now and then, there's a story that stands out as a shining light in a storm of negativity. And the story of Francesco Acerbi is certainly one of the few. Today, we're gonna talk about the rise and fall and resurrection of Francesco Acerbi. From being labeled as the next Alessandro Nesta, to being a failure at Milan, to fighting against cancer twice and getting his career back, to winning the Euro 2020 with Italy. But there's more than all that to the story of Francesco Acerbi. But the question is, what makes the story of Francesco Acerbi so special to us? Well, stick around to find out. Right, so... Acerbi's career had an unusual rise in the Italian football. At 20, he was playing in the 4th division. At 22, he was an important part of a Regina squad that narrowly missed promotion to Serie A. But it was a year later that he was making noises in Serie A, this time with Chievo Verona. His stock was rising and many clubs noticed him, but it was eventually Milan that signed him as a replacement for Alessandro Nesta, a club legend that pretty much won it all with Milan. And not only he was replacing the legendary Nesta in the team, but he was also given his famous number 13 shirt as well. Yep, no pressure kid. That being said, the loss of his father caused him to fall into a heavy drinking habit and it massively hindered his performances, to the point that Milan had to cut their losses just 6 months in and sold him to Genoa. In summer 2013, fresh from promotion to Serie A, Sassuolo signed Acerbi from Genoa. But this is where things get interesting. It was in this fateful summer that a turning point has arrived, not only in Acerbi's career, but in his life. During the preseason health checkups, doctors found a lump in his testicle, a sign of a potential cancerous tumor. He was quick to have the tumor removed, and the surgery was deemed a success, and he went for a 13-game run. Just when things were looking good for Acerbi, life had thrown another punch at the defender. Life was all good, until Francesco Acerbi failed the drug test in December due to irregular hormone levels that turned out to be symptoms of the cancer's return. The next 6 months would be important in the story of Francesco Acerbi. He went through chemotherapy to recover from the cancer, and during this time, the defender made sure that he missed as little training as possible. The determination and humor that he showed during this time turned him into an icon for Sassuolo fans and admiration from all over the country. This cancer could have cost him his career, or even his whole life. But you wanna know what doesn't cost much? Pressing that like button. Guys, it's free, and I'd be so honored if you like or comment on the video. It really helps me as this is a young channel. I love reading and replying to your comments. So, back to our story. Times were hard for Francesco Acerbi, but so was our man of the hour. At the very tender age of 26, he had already beaten cancer twice. He missed the remainder of that season, but worked hard during the summer to make sure that he was fit for the 2014-15 season. At the start of the season, Sassuolo decided to gradually ease him back into the first team action. But it wasn't until October when the rest of the world found out about his comeback. In a game against direct rivals, Acerbi scored in a 3-1 victory away at Parma. He was surrounded by all his teammates, and it was an emotional moment for all the Sassuolo fans, players, and staff. Victorious in his battle against cancer, Acerbi was well and truly back. Normally, in these kinds of situations, this is when the story ends. A high note after a massive struggle. But this wasn't a normal story, and our boy Francesco Acerbi was just beginning. From that moment onwards, Acerbi played 149 consecutive games without any injury, rest, or suspension. Becoming one of the most reliable centre-backs in an Italian football that's well known for producing some of the world's best defenders. Eventually, he signed with Lazio, who recently lost Stefan De Vrij to Inter. Just like his time with Milan, he was gonna replace an important figure in Lazio, and this time, he didn't back down. His first season in Lazio was amazing, to the point that he was named in multiple teams of the season, as well as returning to the Italian national team once again by Roberto Mancini. And remember that 149th streak of consecutive games? Well, it was only a controversial red card against Napoli that ended that streak. The season after, he even won the Italian Cup as well, but this wasn't the last trophy that he would win. At age 33, he was finally set to feature in his first ever international tournament, where he played 3 games in Euro 2020 and assisted an extra time match winning goal against Austria. And on July 11th, he was a Euro 2020 winner along with the rest of the Italian squad at Wembley against England. 
This was the story of the rise and fall and resurrection of Francesco Acerbi, a story of full times and tribulations, but also a testament to the human willpower when it's mentally and physically hard to do so. So, what do you think about the story of Francesco Acerbi? I hope the story of Francesco Acerbi serves as a light of hope in the darkest of times for anyone struggling with the horrors of cancer. And with that said, I'm Football Drawn and I like to tell football stories with comic and drawings. If you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of the channel as well.